It's Academy Awards time. It's a big day for Hollywood, a big day for movie lovers, a big day for the movie business. Our next guest knows the movies thoroughly well. Roger Ebert is the Pulitzer Prize winning film critic of the Chicago Sun-Times. He's the co-host of Ebert and Roper, which appears on more than 200 stations. For the previous 23 years, he co-hosted Siskel and Ebert with the late Gene Siskel. Roger Ebert is the author of 15 books, including The Great Movies and Roger Ebert's Movie Yearbook and I Hated, Hated, Hated that movie. He joins us from Chicago, Illinois. Roger, welcome to the Motley Fool Radio Show. Thank you so much, Tom. We're going to talk about this year's Oscars in a minute, but first we want to talk about you and your passion for film. Okay. When did you first fall in love with the movies? Well, uh, as a kid. Uh, we had um, a theater on Main Street in Champaign-Urbana, and uh, I went downtown every Saturday afternoon for an orgy of, you had a, let's see, a double feature, five-color cartoons, a serial, a newsreel, coming attractions, ads for the local bank and milk company, and occasionally a yo-yo contest on stage. So you would be disgorged into the outer world about five hours later, and it all cost a dime. Uh, let's talk about movies in the movie industry for a few minutes. Okay. Um, over the uh, more than a quarter century that you've critiqued film, what's the most positive and the most negative change, in your opinion, in the movie industry? Uh, the most negative change is marketing has taken over from art. When I started, uh, directors wanted to make the great American movie. Now they want to make uh, the big box office hit. When I started, marketing departments uh, were kind of helpless and impotent and felt they didn't know what the public wanted. Now they think they know what the public wants, and they tell the public what it wants. And because of the practice of block booking movies into 3,000 theaters on the same day and hammering them in with 30 and $40 million advertising campaigns, they have imposed this kind of mass lack of taste uh, on the helpless audience. So that's the most discouraging. Uh, the best thing that has happened is a high-quality home video, uh, as represented by the DVD, because uh, now you can program your own movie going and have something that approximates but certainly does not duplicate the theater-going experience. Let's move to this year's Academy Awards. Let's talk about uh, this year's contestants and get your picks for some of the major categories. Best, sure. best picture. You know, I originally um, I thought it was a shoe in for Lord of the Rings. And then I thought, well, the Academy skews older and doesn't really like action fantasy. So maybe not. And A Beautiful Mind is exactly the kind of picture the Academy loves to honor because uh, uh, they love movies about people who have enormous problems, in this case schizophrenia, and overcome them with enormous victories such as the Nobel Prize. They love biopics. Uh, they love pictures that are classy. They like to nominate a picture like that as if that's the sort of film they made all year, you know, as if they weren't making The Mummy Returns and Scream 3, that they always made A Beautiful <laughs> Mind. But then, of course, there was this controversy over the factual accuracy mm -hmm. of A Beautiful Mind and whether or not uh, some aspects of John Forbes Nash's um, uh, history and life were... Um, uh, sort of left out of the movie, and so that was that was a backlash. And I'm finally, I think it cost it some votes. Mm -hmm. And I'm finally coming around to the possibility that Moulin Rouge has a real good chance of winning. Uh -huh. I like the others, too, and I liked uh, In the Bedroom the most of all, but I don't think it has much of a chance for a Best Picture. How about Best Actor? Um, best Actor will be uh, Denzel Washington, who probably would have won anyway, but certainly Russell Crowe's behavior at the British Academy Awards hurt him. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, also the fact that he won last year will be fresh in Academy voters' minds, and they'll think, well, you know, he just won, and now he's pushing this guy around in Britain. And Denzel is such a great actor in, in, uh, in Training Day. So I think Denzel will win. What about Best Actress? I'm predicting Holly Berry. Uh, you know, I thought Monster's Ball was the best movie made last year, but I questioned whether enough Academy members would have seen it to give Halle Berry the chance that she deserves. And then uh, two weeks ago she won the Screen Actors Guild Award for Actress of the Year, and I thought if enough of the Screen Actors have seen it, that's an interesting sign because there are more actors in the Academy than any other branch. Now, they're not exactly the same people 
as the membership of the Guild, but there's a lot of overlap. And so if she can win the Screen Actors Guild, she can win the Academy Award. So I'm predicting Holly Berry. Now, we play a game each week on the show, in, uh, in, which we call Buy, Sell, or Hold. But before we get to that, I want to just ask you, because we're a business and money show, is there yes. a single movie or one or two movies that stand out in your mind as being extraordinary films about business or money that our listeners should? Well, you know, I think the funniest line of dialogue uh, that David Mamet has ever written was about money. And it came in his movie of 2001 called Heist, The Heist. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny DeVito was trying to convince Gene Hackman to pull one more job. And Gene Hackman says he doesn't want to do it. He'd rather go sailing. And Danny DeVito says, you got to do it. And Hackman says, why do I have to do it? And DeVito says, for the money. And Hackman says, I don't like money. And then DeVito comes up with this classic mammoth line, which ought to be the motto of The Motley Fool. Everybody likes money. That's why they call it money. <laughs> and you know, the great thing about audio, Roger, is that we can just clip that now, and you have delivered our motto for this show there each week. Okay, now let's play buy, sell, or hold. Uh, we present you with a person, place, or thing, an event, a theme, an organization, and we ask you, if it were a stock, would you be buying, selling, or holding, and okay. why? Buy, sell, or hold, given the encroaching technologies, blockbuster. I would uh, sell. And why? Because I think that uh, electronic means of transmission are going to eventually replace the trip to the video store. And I think Blockbuster itself is investing in that area. I think there will be video on demand that will come in by satellite or Internet. Buy, sell, or hold? On the other hand, mm -hmm. when, uh, when video stores started, everybody laughed at them, pointing out that lending libraries had gone out of business. And uh, video stores are very popular because people do like to, le to leave the house and go to the video store. Mm -hmm. It's the same as every office has a coffee machine, but people want to go out to Starbucks. And in a way, both Blockbuster and Starbucks are selling the same thing. They're not selling coffee. They're not selling videos. They're selling the trip to the store. Now, you're just convincing me this is a buy, Roger. Well, it may be a hold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number two, buy, sell, or hold. We're starting to see the previews for it. Buy, sell, or hold the next installment in the Star Wars series, Attack of the Clones. Buy. Why? Sure to be the top-grossing movie of the year. Sure to make hundreds of millions of dollars. Sure to be a perennial evergreen franchise. Sure to be grossing uh, big dough and home video for the next quarter of a century. And finally, buy, sell, or hold Ingrid Bergman. Buy. Buy big. You know, get heavy into Bergman. And why? She's the most beautiful woman in the history of the movies, from certain angles. You know, I once did Casablanca a frame at a time, or a shot at a time. I, I do these uh, seminars at film festivals where you start out with a DVD or a laser disc or in the old days 16 millimeter, and you freeze a frame and go through the movie over six to ten hours with a group of people uh, looking at it very carefully. And I did Casablanca once with Haskell Wexler, the great cinematographer, uh, joining me. We sat side by side and analyzed that movie uh, with a, with a stop-action approach. And at one point she moved her head from the left to the right, and he froze the frame right in the middle so she was looking straight at the camera. And Wexler, who like all cinematographers is a student of the human face, said, you see, that's the angle they never show you. Ingrid Bergman straight on is kind of plain and pudding-faced but she has a fabulous profile. The reviews are in for this interview. Roger Ebert shows great passion and a plucky spirit. Thank you very much. And by the way, The Motley Fool appears in the Chicago Sun-Times every Sunday. We love being there. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's a great spot for us, and, and uh, we're, we're thrilled to be appearing in the same newspaper as you. We don't expect to ever win a Pulitzer, though. Uh, Roger Ebert, thanks so much for joining us on The Motley Fool Radio Show. This was fun, Tom. Thank you.